Common rookie mistakes when you start working for hire. Welcome back Cheers. to Cheers. Photography After Hours. Cheers. You guys are so distant. Give me a mugshot. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, so we are back here with Photography After Hours, and we're going to be talking about some common mistakes that some newbies make out there when you get a job, and you're asked to do a job, and you have to go out and shoot this job, mostly of event photography. You know, friends like, hey, I have my wedding anniversary, any kind of thing coming up, and you're like, hey, can you do it? You have a big camera. So um, before we get into that, we'd like to do a couple of things. Tell everyone about our sponsor, Pack. So they are the Photographers of Venture Club. They sponsor this whole show, and they do networking, photo meetings, um, seminars, workshops, and photo walks. So, and we make ice cream. Yes, ice cream. Yeah. New, this is new. New mm -hmm. for 2016. Brand new. Ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> so check it out on photoadvclub.com. Your favorite ice cream. Yeah, there oh, you go. Yeah. Right. Now in now in ten flavors. Yeah. So um, let's introduce everyone. We have Sprague. Hi everybody. My favorite is cherry gumball ice cream. <laughs> Susie. Rainbow sherbet. Scott. I like pistachio. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> do I have to say ice cream? I had a strawberry shake today. You like yeah. butter pecan. Yeah. Yeah, butter pecan. Oh, no, the southern it's butter pecan. It's deteriorated into a discussion on dairy products. Yes, we've yes. taste tested several. Southern butter pecan is the best. Awesome stuff. Yep. So we're, uh, we're going to get into this and in uh, 50 minutes or less crack down how you can avoid some of these mistakes. Um, we've already talked about specifically about wedding photography before, so this is going to be in general event photography. So the number one thing we all agreed on was inexperience. You get asked to do this job, you jump on the pack Facebook page and you go, hey, I have a wedding tomorrow or I have an event tomorrow. What do I do? Yeah. So, what lens do I take? Yeah. What like what well, ISO what ISO But do if I you're shoot asking at? those questions, yeah. that's already showing yourself that you don't really feel confident that you can do yeah. the job, right? At that yeah. point you're I mean, already purposely behind. Too. I mean at some point we've all been there, yeah. you know. I mean it's this is something that every photographer is going to encounter at some point. In we'll their... learn from other people's mistakes. Right. Like if he made the mistake, why should we all make it? You right. know, if I made the mistake, why should you guys all make it? That's what all this pack stuff is about is getting better, quicker, and doing a good job. Right. So when someone asks you, you're like, yeah, I can do this. Well, you the know? thing is, is that people feel that they're good photographers, and then they feel good enough to where it's like, okay, yeah, I could take on a job. And then they get on the job, and things go really bad really fast and yeah. it's because they like don't the have the right you're in the bathroom well yeah like, it's yeah. because they don't have the experience it's because it looks good on paper yeah and then you get there and you're like oh i didn't think of that yeah there's so like what were you well, well and the thing is you know you think that well this is just like shooting an event at home like christmas or thanksgiving or something like that and then you walk into the church with the camera hung around your neck if you're shooting a wedding event for example and you have no concept of what the appropriate shots are what you should be taking uh, how to frame it light it pose how to it shoot everything in candlelight when yeah. there's not sufficient light inside the I don't know the, about you but my like thanksgiving flash. shots suck no one looks at the camera no one listens to me I have this big old camera and everything and they're like Kids are they're looking this way the turkey every the white balance is off because I just grabbed it yeah, I don't yeah. know it's, it's in my, they look horrible at my when I do them at home like, yeah mom know. ripping apart a headless turkey you know <laughs> the bones are cracking it's the same people every year that's it's right different turkey turkey's bigger or smaller my same sister, tablecloth my All sister right. the vegetarian is running to her room because she can't stand the crackling of the bones you know so so it's inexperience fun, is the, yeah. the top the top one that um you hurdle with that um you know so do you want to go out there and experiment on someone's job like their 50th wedding anniversary or someone's sweet 16 that's a once in a lifetime event or is that something you want to kind of avoid? Yeah, the, a job is no time for exper experimentation. You just, you need to have all that stuff kind of nailed down before you even think We've about We've said it before, so yeah. second shoot if you we did can. a whole episode second on shoot that. Before Look at that episode, you, second before shoot. Before you sign up to be the first shooter. Before or you if you get hired. Just hire someone else. Say, look, you know, I, I want to be able to enjoy the event because you're inviting me as a friend, and you know, you can second shoot and learn, and then get get them someone that you do trust to go out there and shoot the job. So then you know they're getting someone good. You don't have to stress about it, and you can tag along and follow them. 
you know, and, and have fun. Well, the other thing is you might not be shooting a wedding, you might be shooting a sports event, a, a high school sport event mm -hmm. is really pretty typical for what most people do. And so if you just show up ready to go, you know, with your camera, you may not realize that you might want, need a longer lens and that you might want to get people posed and yep. you might want to stage whatever event it is, like if it's if it's baseball or soccer or something, you know, you might want to have, you know, a place where everybody just comes through and kicks and, you know, well, get it set just, up. Yeah, it's not even that, but, but going back to the seniors, that's a big one because that's where a lot of people like mm. kind of cut their teeth is mm -hmm. like family photos, senior photos, mm -hmm. you know, high school seniors. Your um, kids' events. Yeah, your kids' events. That's where people, like, start off cutting their teeth. And the thing is, is that, okay, you may photograph your sister, cousin, whatever, and and do a really good job, and you're thinking, yeah, I can do this. But then you get a job where you get hired by the high school senior or their, their parent, their mom, and the mom is there, and mm -hmm. the mom is, like, dictating the way the shot, and you, like, she just derails you because mm -hmm. you don't know how to handle the parents. You don't know how to handle her. Up, or if, right? or if mm -hmm. the senior is like, you know, she may not be the same personality as your cousin or your sister. You may not have that same connection Never with her. Before, yeah. yeah. And so, mm -hmm. you know, things just go south very quickly because your artistic style and experience and stuff may not fit her what she envisions and what she keeps trying to push you in a direction of. Yeah. And you can have a big departure there and if yep. you're constantly trying to chase whatever it is that she has in mind, you're not going to get anything. Yeah, so so rolling back to what Sprague brought on was one that we had on our list there was knowing what shots to get too yeah. so mm -hmm. that you can yeah. pose them and get people through, especially if it's an event where you have lots of people. Like I used to shoot proms and we, it was like you had to just get people through. You had to get right. 250 to 1,000 people depending on how many couples there were through a line during cocktail hour or pretty close to that and you'd always go over especially with the bigger problems but sometimes we had to set up more than one setup just to know the logistics of how to do this and people get us all the time now to go do problems because they don't want to spend any money and they'll show up with like one shooter you know and try to shoot this and you shoot all the whole prom you're shooting because you, you know you'll be going through dinner and still asking for people then ask them to call mm -hmm. people up because they didn't have the experience to bring two or three shooters out and yeah. price it the right way so. Well, and set it up. I mean, learn from t uh, from TV and movies. The best pictures are staged. So, um, you know, sometimes there's good candidates, but you know, you mm -hmm. have to do your post pictures too. Right. They're, I think there's a good mix, probably. They're thought out, so you have mm -hmm. an idea of what you have to get. What you know comes with the experience, like you yeah. know, going and checking the hall out, or going and checking the venue out, and knowing, okay, this might be a good spot for a picture, or where's the sun going to be? Using the mm -hmm. apps we talked yep. about in previous episodes of. Which, you know, where's the sun going to be? Is it going to be right behind them? Or is it going to be behind me? Is it yeah. going to, you know? Even if you're going to be indoors, knowing whether light is going to be coming through a window at, in the afternoon, things like that, you can just kind of think, well, there's an option. I can use that window light, you know, that kind of stuff. But yeah, but, you know, there's, if you're photographing people, you got to be a people person. That's true. You have to know how to handle and, and, I don't like people. I photograph people. <laughs> well, you have to. I mean, at some point you gotta, you gotta, you gotta. You have to come to alive. Get that person to like you. So yeah. that, you know, there's a lot of fantastic photographers who like shoot products and they're like in a cocoon in their own little studio and they put out amazing work. But then you put a person in front of them and it's all awkward. yeah, they can't photograph them. They're like, because... take your clothes off, please. It's a talent. <laughs> I'll just there wait are, here. There are people. I just I admire it because it is a talent. You know, to to have that report, to form that report quickly yeah. with your with your subject. So back to his again. Um, mm -hmm. Knowing what shots you need is also preparing with a shot list and talking to your client ahead of time. So it's not just hey, can you come to my event Saturday? Because then again, you can't prepare and have time to see the mm -hmm. venue, talk to them, all that stuff. So mm -hmm. shot list is important to be able to have that ready so that you know, like okay, I need a shot. Like my my sister's wedding, they forgot a, sh a shot of my sister and my grandmother. Yeah. And then she had passed away, so like then you can't get that shot mm -hmm. ever again. So it's like, you know, you want to be able to have all the shots that they want so they can't yeah. come back and say you forgot something. Yeah. If you have no shot you, list. The kid they... only blows out his candles once on his first birthday, so you mm -hmm. want to try to get that shot. Yeah, they have those candles Usually that keep lighting up, so they can blow out 10 to 30 <laughs> times sometimes. I guess for the first birthday, yeah. you get it with them stuffing the cake in their face. But, yeah. uh, well, it's yeah. fun because you want to make your sister cry, so you know, <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's always a family moment. You yeah, know? well, going back to the shot list too, it, it, you also have to like manage expectations, mm -hmm. you know, because there's a lot of logistics involved mm -hmm. in it. And so, 
if you don't manage, you know, you don't know how many times people have come to me and it's like, oh, I saw this picture on Pinterest and I yeah, want to, I want to, yeah, exactly. and I want to reproduce this shot. And so like, yeah. they like, yeah, go through the whole, you know, like we're not in New York City at the public yeah, library, and like, on like the we're in Arizona and like, unless you found a, you know, a photo of a cactus, you know, yeah. we're not going to get that same <laughs> shot, you that. know, yeah. so you got to manage those expectations, like people, sure. ha what they have in their mind and what their vision yeah what is logistically possible sure. well even like if we're since we're talking event photography even shooting band um i have in my head the objectives of who i'm gonna make sure i get shots of like obviously you need to get the lead singer you need to get the lead guitarist that kind of stuff it's harder to get good shots of the drummer the keyboardist stuff like that especially they're behind other equipment things like that but you you have must-have shots and that you plan them out and and once you know you've got that you work on the next one you know you work on time and at you... band camp <laughs> <laughs> but you have to do it quickly especially if it's a bigger show and you only have two, the first songs. two or three songs to work through you have to have a plan you can't just wing it and you know yeah you kind of have to think mm -hmm. ahead but um we also were talking about thinking ahead in terms of equipment yep. and making sure that you have you're thinking through the possible failures. Like if you, let's say someone bumps into you and you drop your camera yeah, <laughs> and you are you. out a body and a lens, what are you going to do? You I know? usually cry or, and then mm -hmm. there's usually fish thrown most of the time, <laughs> an insurance call and yeah. you go home. And be like, I mean, you try not to let that happen. We were prepared with a black rapid strap or whatever, <laughs> right? But Well, I have a hand happen. strap on my camera. Equipment so everyone in my camera has a hand strap. Yeah. So that if someone hits me, that it falls even your hand, but you can still get your flash broken. You sure. know, I've had people bump into me and break the flash foot because they're just made out of plastic. Mm -hmm. There's a ton mm -hmm. of things that could happen. Your lens, you know, sure. someone could drop it in the water, like you said. You've seen photographers walking backwards and they go fall into a fountain. And I saw a video of We all that. laugh at it, but it could, if it happens on an event, yeah. you know, you do, do you horrified. have backup? You know, do you have a second of everything? Mm -hmm. Don't go unprepared. You know, you can't just be like, I got a Canon 6Ti from Costco yesterday and I'm going to go shoot a wedding tomorrow. It's just unprofessional and unsafe because if that fails, which it's electronic equipment, stuff breaks, you know. That's um, someone's the episode that we recorded here, event. that the sound broke, talking about sound, you know. It's like <laughs> we have all pro gear and we recorded it all. And we recorded yeah. four episodes. One of them, it just didn't work mm -hmm. and stuff happened. So you need to have backup, you know. And Gremlins. Well, yeah, there's gremlins inside there, but, you know, it's... Shoot raw and JPEG, so you have two copies of it. You have two card slots. Shoot it one to one card, one to the other. That takes the card out, so if something happens to a card, have an extra lens, have an extra body. Borrow an extra lens of body. You don't have to go out and buy it. If you have a friend or someone else, have it, though. Who cares if it's even a Nikon and you have a Canon or a Canon you have a Nikon? Or, mm -hmm. God forbid, a Lumix. Right. You know, then you could just have it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and we're not no. saying don't don't start working for hire if you don't feel entirely prepared. I was totally saying that. Well, no. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Thing is, the thing is, like, I don't think, at least personally, I don't think I ever felt like I was 100% prepared. Like, I always thought... There Always could something prepared. could go wrong, you know what I mean? Well, that kind of stuff. So I I sometimes feel not, like I mean I am going in a hundred percent prepared. Yeah. But even mm -hmm. when you are one hundred percent prepared, stuff still happens. Yeah, and you're just like, kind of like and you know you know you, you, as prepared as you are, things are gonna things are gonna get thrown at time schedules, timelines are gonna get off. So and so is gonna forget something, and he has to like run yep. to the hotel and pick it back up. That puts you half an hour off schedule. Something's gonna happen. Something's Just gonna happen. Roll with it. Find a way to fix it. Be be prepared, but don't make it uh, discourage you from actually. You know. Yeah. Even when I owned the, I owned a big entertainment and photography company, but I always had two of everything, and I wasn't the main photographer, so maybe mm -hmm. I didn't have two cameras for certain jobs because I was maybe, you know, just doing it for my my screens or something else. But we always had like extra systems, extra CDs, all kinds of stuff because if something happened, I needed to get by. Even if it was a disc man and I needed to play one song, I could play the rest of the event. So backup with any kind of professional services is important. You know, you don't want to, you can't back everything up. You can't have two cars and, you know, but the stuff you can back up, try to have two of it and then mm -hmm. back up on that side of pictures too mm -hmm. having your pictures backed up and so you don't lose cards you've heard of people like oh i put my cards in my pocket and then 
wash mm-hmm. my jacket or something, back it up as soon as you can so you have yeah. backups of your data because that kind of stuff happens too. Yeah. Well, to the point you made earlier, don't take a brand new camera that you bought yesterday and take it to the event because it's going to be, how do I just set, get the basic settings? A friend of mine had asked me to show him how to work his Nikon camera, which was sort of a, a beginner's SLR, but all the basic settings are buried in submenus. Yep. And so I basically sat with him for about two hours and stared at it like it was just, I don't know, some sort of an obelisk. I had no idea how to make it work. I couldn't take a picture. I was finally like, go! Take picture, you know, I was yelling at it, mm-hmm. but um, if you're in there and you just can't uh, fix a basic thing like uh, changing the ISO setting or something like that or the shutter speed or you, you just don't have the um, the muscle memory to make this thing work, then everything is going to really bog down. You'll start taking a bunch of shots that aren't coming out and you yeah. won't be able to figure out how to make that adjustment and in the camera. It could be something stupid moment. like the yeah. spot metering is on or something, you just don't know where it is in the menu and, yeah. and yeah. it throws all your shots off drastically mm-hmm. where you're like, this works on my other camera. You know, in between my 7D and my 5D Mark III, they moved the delete and play button, which I knew exactly where it was to review an image. So every time I'd go to play, it would say, do you want to delete this? I'm like, no. So like, yeah. they moved that. So in the dark, when you're shooting an event, you were just totally enough thrown to off screw just you with up. those yeah. two. And never mind all the menus they change between mm-hmm. each model. Just because they're bored, I think. They're like, yeah, let's just put this here, put that there, take that out. And your new one, when you did uh, HDR, it didn't actually work with the uh which it only the jpegs randomly yes. Yeah. so yes. like they just change anyway. stuff between no, one they, model and the other model well they change stuff too on like i didn't the, the expect my yeah my peripherals to not connect anymore yeah. Like, so you got to be careful with that. Any new equipment, you know. Yeah, so know, try your, know your equipment. Well, well, and check it out too, because I was getting ready to go on a trip to uh, the Middle East, and I had ordered a new lens, and got it, you know, the day before, and I'm just out trying it out, and the pictures were coming out just absolutely terrible, and there wasn't anything I could do about it. It turned out it was just a defective lens, and so be, yeah. um, I didn't have time to return it, so, you know, this $1,000 lens that I had, I just had to, you know, wait until I got home and sent it back, and I had to go with the stuff I had, and so that was a bit of a disappointment. Yep, yep. so stuff does come broken, shipping. I used to work mm-hmm. at UPS. You would never ship anything at UPS if you saw what happens by it. It's like <laughs> yeah. the balls. There's a hole in the wall. You have to build the wall and jam that box in. It's like... Yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, so let's uh, review, and we're going to come back to part two on this. So um, common mistakes, inexperience. Don't go inexperience. Um, don't experiment on someone else's job. There's a paid job. Um, even if it's a free job, treat it as a paid job. Knowing what shots you need mm-hmm. and getting your shots ahead of time, knowing your equipment and making sure it's not defective, works, and also that you have backup equipment. Um, understanding poses we're going to go over and some other stuff in part two so stay tuned and check it out um, as soon as we come back in seven days from now (laughs) (laughs) so cheers we'll see you guys cheers